Hey guys and girls, welcome to Nightwise.com, the one and only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. The video blog with the eyes on the road, the hands on the steering wheel, but the head is thinking about technology. And that technology today is going to be mobile technology. We're, as usual, recording from the car, and we can be, you know, a show about mobile technology as a topic. It's kind of fitting that we record this in a car. Basically, I'm recording this on a device that enables me to call other people, which is something we started doing two centuries ago, um, but that has the capabilities of being a mini recording, editing, editing and, and, and uh, production studio for a video podcast and distribution platform, because I you know shove this up to YouTube and then you can watch it. And having that kind of technology with you wherever you go pretty powerful stuff don't you think but it, it's it's a sign of the times of, of how I live these days um, you guys know since the beginning of the podcast I have always been in the car <laughs> I've done the longest commutes over the last 10 years and always I've been listening to podcasts or using that time to, to, to create content and to actually produce podcasts and once again we're doing it in the car and that, that mobile lifestyle that I have is challenging me more and more to move my, how can you call it, my digital activities from the classic desktop slash laptop approach to where mobile devices are becoming more and more, not only the, the interface that I use to interact with my data, but also the place where I create my data. Hence. I'm creating this literally on my phone. Because of this, I have been using my tablet quite a lot these days. I used to, I, when I got my tablet back in the days of, of, of old iPads for, since the iPad 1, um, I've always seen a tablet as um, a consumption device, something you use to browse the web on, something you use to uh, watch video podcasts on or TV shows or YouTube something you use to, to read comics to read books it's always be, it's something that you use to, to, to read Wikipedia or RSS always an activity where you're kind of laying back and you know just consuming content and I've been of this philosophy for the longest time where I say phones are for communication laptops and desktops are for content creation and tablets are for content consumption. And that's actually the hierarchy of how I distributed software along my devices. Now, the last year or so, I've been, you know, kind of out of the house a lot. As I, I get up at, at 5, I leave uh, home at 6 a.m., I get back at about 6 a.m., so I'm on the road quite a bit, and I am away from home quite a bit, and I've noticed that that mobile computing part that I have, my phone and, and my tablet, are not only are, are losing their role as content uh, consumption devices, but are actually taking the forefront as content creation devices. Because I am away from a regular keyboard and a regular mouse for so long. So, since it's time to uh, upgrade Niana's uh, iPad 3, which is getting a little slow, um, it is time to move on my iPad mini 4 to, to her. Uh, I've had the iPad mini 4 for about a year now. I gotta say, probably one of the best iPads I've ever owned. Um, compact, great colors, great screen, great size, I have speed, it's, it's fine. I actually have no complaints, except that you know I'm passing it on. And I have to get something new, so I thought like, I don't know, what am I going to get? You know, I need a tablet. Uh, pff, do I really need a tablet? And I thought, like, do I really need a tablet? And, uh, yeah, I kind of do. Do I? Well, what are you going to do on that tablet? If it's for media consumption, you can just buy something that's really cheap. And I took a look at the Samsung S2s. Uh, and uh, because they're, they're actually, you, know, you get a tablet for what? 100 euros, 150, 200 euros? And then you have actually quite a good tablet 
to to watch your YouTube and browse your stuff and so that was enough but then I thought what if I can punch up the productivity of said tablet and, and really make it into not only a content consumption device but also a content creation device and the reason I started to think about this is because I got you know a look at the new iPad Pro now when the iPad Pro came out I went like Wow, a really overpriced iPad with a refresh rate that the human eye cannot fathom, uh, with a screen that's supposed to be laminated, whatever that may be, um, and with a stylus that looks like a pregnancy test, a predictor stick. That's what I call it. It's not the Apple Pencil, it's the Apple predictor stick. Um, nothing really wow. I mean, if you were at WWDC and you jumped up and clapped at uh, at uh, Johnny Ives and, and what's his name there that this was innovative you got another thing coming Apple is behind the times a lot with with technology like this you know I've owned a surface for about two years now and it is a fantastic device it comes with a stylus you can do some writing with that and it's a great it's a great little device um, powerful laptop does everything it does probably one of the better laptops that I've owned so far but it is kind of heavy. It's not really a tablet. It's 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 a laptop thing with a touchscreen. But as good as it is, it's great. But it's not a tablet. It's not a tablet because of two things: a because it's not a tablet. It's actually a PC, and two because it has a PC operating system, which makes it a great mobile PC, but which kind of makes it kind of hard to use it as, as a tablet because of the interface and kind of hard to use as a tablet because of the weight distribution, it's heavy, and the battery. You're not going to get 10 hours out of a Surface Pro 4 when you're using it as a tablet. No way. That being said, so I was kind of meh. I went kind of like meh um, at the, um, at the uh, iPad Pro in the beginning. So. I decided to go up to the store a couple of weeks ago and kind of take a look at it. And um, there was the regular iPad was there as well, and the iPad Pro was right next to it. So in size, there are almost there's no difference. In price, big difference. It's almost half. Um, so I went like, you know what? I can just get one of these regular iPads. It's big, bigger, does everything it needs to do. CPU is okay. Um, it's it's still as fast as my iPad mini, uh, same resolution as my iPad mini, it's great, it'll be fine. And then I took a look at the iPad Pro. Now all of these extra features where I thought no human is going to be able to actually notice them, they are very much there. The laminated screen, it's like the text is like right on the glass and with the iPad right next to it, and this is a clever marketing trick of course. There's this little air gap between the screen and the glass. And if you only see an iPad, I've never noticed this on my iPad mini, you won't notice. If you put it next to an iPad Pro with a higher refresh rate and the laminated screen, it's like watching content through the roof of a greenhouse. It's like there's glass and there's air and then there's the screen. It's like down there. And with the iPad Pro, it's like up here at the on the glass refresh rate yeah it, oh man it scrolls fluently really nice Apple stylus okay but it's expensive so I thought you know I'm not gonna buy this it looks good but I'm not gonna buy this if I can't really use it and then we come to the age-old discussion of how to use your tablet since the dawn of tablets People have been trying to make tablets behave like PCs. You get these horrible contraptions of cases where you actually have a keyboard and, and a screen and it clicks together and you can fold it open and look, it looks like a laptop and it has a keyboard. Yeah, but it's not a laptop. I don't know in Hell's Bells why you would, I, I've seen these cases where it's a keyboard and then there's, there's this case right on there. You can fold it open and then you have something that looks like a laptop. But you can't fold it back, you can't disconnect it. You're stuck with this, you know, plasticky looking 
laptop with a very expensive tablet inside. And the question that I pose myself is why? Why would you let a tablet behave? Or why would you interact with a tablet like you interact with a laptop? The tablet has one big upside. It is made with touch in mind. It's made for chubby fingers. Interfaces made for chubby th fingers. Both Android and iOS are made for chubby fingers. Um, that's great. It works fine. We've tried putting a non-chubby finger operating system onto a tablet, and then you get Windows 10 on the Surface Pro 4, which, being there, done that, doesn't work. Great, great laptop, nice stylus, out of town. Doing the same thing with the iPad, trying to wedge it into a keyboard and make it behave like a PC. Great tablet, not a laptop. So don't. Don't do that. Don't expect your tablet to behave like a laptop. Don't dress up your tablet like a laptop by adding it a keyboard. Being sensible as I am, I took a look at the Apple Magic Keyboard. Any, anything that Apple makes with the word magic in front of it is magic. It's just, just that's Apple-ese for overpriced. That's Cupertini's for oh, magic this, overpriced this. So the magic, is, is that what it's called? Magic um, cover or something with the integrated keyboard? Looks like crap. It looks like something that you ordered off Alibaba three years ago. This is dorky, dorky keys and, and you know, the, la the, the, the you have to flap it around. I see people trying to make all, it's like origami with, with, with I don't know, with pieces of cardboard. I'm trying to fold everything, make it stand up and then it falls over and Nah, I wasn't a real fan of that either. I went like, okay, if I buy a tablet, I'm using it as a tablet. I can, I want to add a keyboard in should I need to, but for the rest, I'm using the touch interface because that's what it's for. So I thought long and hard about how I'm going, to, how am I going to approach this? How am I going to approach my productivity using a tablet? I'm not going to invest without the fact without the assurance that I actually can do something with it that's productive. So the, the upsides of the tablet are, it is um, easy to whip out. It doesn't have to boot, you just turn it on. It's a great battery life. The iPad Pro has a great screen, uh, plenty of storage, has a little stylus. Well, in all, it looks like a great device. Um, it's a one-up on the Surface Pro 4, which is a lot heavier. So pull it out, open it up, and boot it up. Still, great laptop. Laptop, not a tablet. Tablet, not a laptop. Shouldn't be comparing them, but I still do. So I thought like, okay, as a standard content consumption device, this is this is total and utter crap. You know, there's there's no way that, that uh, you know, I can, I can actually, you know, do something with this. But then again, it's too expensive as a content consumption device. And it's not really suited for my workflows as a content creation device, or is it? So I thought long and hard about it, and I came up with this. If I can adjust my workflows so that they use the mobile rudimentary interface, touch interface, of the tablet as kind of a staging area, and finish up the productivity that I have, that the project that I want to do, that I want to do, finish up my process. Sorry about the road noise. What if I finish up my process on a PC and just use the tablet kind of as a mobile first step, a mobile staging area? So I, I you know, started thinking, you know, what can I do? What can I do? So, what I do a couple of things: um, email and communication. Email and communication are fine on the uh, iPad. You, know, you can use either the Google apps or you can use the standard mail apps. For 99% of my email communication, the iPad is good, great. If I have to whip around attachments and stuff and they aren't in Dropbox or I can't be able to access them just right there, that's just the 1% of activities that I'm gonna hand off to whatever uh, desktop that I'm using. Again, it's not or the tablet or the laptop. It's both. Tablet as a staging area, laptop or desktop, whatever, to finish off the job. So great, 
reading emails, punching out simple emails, I bet, fantastic. Um, I take a lot of notes uh, in meetings. I have to drabble up designs. PC, not that, not that great. Uh, Surface Pro 4, great, um, fantastic device, connected to a Beamer, do drawings on OneNote and stuff like that. Wonderful, but walking around, really taking annotations when I'm you know, doing designs uh, or, or designing an infrastructure or doing auditing on an infrastructure. Surface Pro 4, kind of lacking. Again, weight, battery life, and the interface is not really mobile friendly, but that's where the iPad would shine. So OneNote on the iPad, great for walking around, Great for taking pictures, great for annotating the pictures, great for writing, um, connecting it to a Beamer. Don't need to. Need it. I got a PC for that, but I just you know want something mobile to quickly gather stuff around. Taking notes, okay, got a little Bluetooth keyboard, uh, Logitech 801, pristine device, um, that I can still drag with me to take longer notes should I want to. Otherwise, on-screen keyboard will do the job. Again, iPad wins. Project management? <laughs> I, don't, I, I looked around. I, I do project management, so I have these Gantt charts. With, then you do this, and then you do that, and then you do that. And um, there are actually iPad apps that can do it. But I took a look at OmniPlan, but it's really expensive, 80 bucks. Um, do I really have to write up an entire work breakdown sheet, an entire Gantt chart on my iPad? No, got my laptop for that. What I do want to do is keep track of them, so I need to be able to read the PDFs of the Gantt charts, or I can use stuff like Trello to uh, whip around these little boxes with tasks and stuff. iPad, fantastic. Uh, again, drawing up um, the, 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 main, the main tasks and subtasks of uh, a project, you don't have to do that in a project management tool. You can do that in a mind map, and mind mapping. That is probably the most productive thing that I do on my tablet. I love mind mapping on my tablet. It's like dragging around and got an idea and drag it over there and put that with sort of this and tap this in. Love it, love it. And it's great for not only uh, mind mapping ideas, I also use mind maps to summarize my books. And if I want to, you know, outline a project, you know, these are the main tasks, the main milestones, these are the subtasks, then we do this and oh, I've uh, now this comes first, kind of drag it around, and then just export that into a tool that does project management. Fantastic! Again, iPad is the staging area of my productivity. Works, you know, great plan. And then there's word processing. You don't do word processing on a tablet. There are mobile versions of Word, and I salute whoever uses this. But whoever does any 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 kind of word processing on <laughs> on, a, on a tablet or a mobile device, I salute you. Again, using the mobile device as a staging area to quickly pounce out text, you know, I can do that in OneNote, there are, there's these, these great, uh, like editorial is one of the things that I use, it's, a, it's kind of like a, a text editor. Text editing on the iPad, fantastic, distraction free, available anywhere, whip it out, type something up, done, love it. Word processing, actually making tables and stuff, not going to happen on the iPad. But again, hand over the content to a desktop and finish the job over there. So I am thinking about different ways of getting all of my workflows, all of the things that I do um, in this kind of zone where I have my tablet with me for 80% of my interactions on the road and have a desktop or a laptop standing by to finish up the job when I get home. So I want to have your thoughts on this. What do you use your tablet for? Do you use it as a content creation device or a content consumption device? Um, and if you use it as a content creation device, what are what are the, 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 the milestones that the, milestones what are the issues that you find annoying what are the tips that you want to share I challenge you to punch them out below in the comments tell me what applications do you use what are your workflows like on your iPad or on whatever tablet that you're using it can also be an Android I don't care um, and and let me know I'll be very very curious as to what you think of it 
Until next time, this was Nightwise, Learning Technology, one for you.